Welcome to this third in my series of five top 10 videos on Wyzant, where my tutor name is Daniel B. PhD. The platform generously allows each tutor to upload a maximum of five short spotlight videos. I was thinking about what I could say in the span of a few minutes about career development, one of my specialties, that might be the most helpful to anyone who watches. It seemed to me that top 10 mistakes to avoid, based on my 30 plus years of experience working in this area, assisting countless professionals at different stages of their development, would be a good topic. So here's a summary after which I'll say a few words about each of these mistakes. Mistake number one is neglecting planning. People don't plan to fail, as the saying goes, they just fail to plan. In the 30 plus years that I've been assisting people professionally with various aspects of career development, my experience overwhelmingly is that clients come to me during a time of crisis, compelled by some urgent external event. Typically that event is being laid off or fired. Rarely are they making a change in their lives intentionally of their own initiative. Rather, it's a change that's being forced upon them by outside circumstances. This dynamic puts the job seeker at a distinct disadvantage for a number of reasons, which for lack of time, I won't go into here. The point is that planning your career development will serve you infinitely better than allowing yourself to be overtaken eventually by events. Mistake number two is overlooking your MBTI, which stands for Myers-Briggs Type Indicator, based on a self-report questionnaire designed to identify a person's personality type, factoring in preferences in four key areas. Combining these preferences, the MBTI generates 16 different personality types which in turn can be matched with career areas. In other words, you answer some simple questions, creating a profile type that can be matched for compatibility with different professions. You can do this for free in about 15 to 20 minutes at a site like 16personalities.com. Even though MBTI has been criticized by some as being unscientific, in all the years I've been working with people, to a person, clients have told me that they have been impressed with its overall accuracy. This can be an invaluable tool in avoiding the sad reality described by Benjamin Disraeli, most people die with their music still locked up inside them. Mistake number three is skipping a mission statement. An effective mission statement is an expression of purpose that is concise, no more than a sentence, crystal clear, and compelling. People with well-defined missions will always have an edge over those without well-defined missions. For job applicants, a mission statement helps land the desired position. For employees, the statement helps get promotions and raises. If you're a small business owner, a truly well-crafted mission statement will distinguish you from the competition and help you grow your business. In short, regardless of your situation, a sound mission statement will significantly help you achieve more and live a richer life. My own mission statement? To help people communicate their messages effectively so they can achieve their goals. Mistake number four is misunderstanding the resume. This misunderstanding manifests itself in numerous ways, but for time considerations, let's just take a quick look at two of the most common, starting with the first on the list here. A good resume will get me the job I want. What a good resume can typically get you is a chance to be considered for the job you want. 
how well you interview after making the cut will become the critical factor. Turning now to the second to the last item on the list here, I can just pay someone to create a great resume for me. No, you cannot. For the result to be compelling, you must be actively involved in the process. Along similar lines, mistake number five is misunderstanding LinkedIn. I don't really need a LinkedIn profile. If you are working professional, the kind who would have a business card and you want to be taken seriously, you do need a LinkedIn profile. A LinkedIn profile is basically just the resume with a headshot. We don't have time to cover them here, but there are important differences between a LinkedIn profile and a resume. One of which is that the LinkedIn profile is typically by nature more general. The more connections I have on LinkedIn, the better. What's more important than the number of connections is their quality. Applying to job posts there is the only way to use it to get a job. In fact, there are LinkedIn networking strategies that are much more effective than the standard shotgun approach to applying for jobs. I'd need to pay for the premium version to really get, get benefit. No, you don't. And there are ways to use the premium version at no cost through free trials for limited periods of time. Mistake number six is misunderstanding networking. If you think of networking as a boring necessity, that's probably what it's going to turn out to be for you with disappointing results. <clears throat> if you think of it as a game that can be fun, your results will improve dramatically. You don't have to be an extrovert and you don't necessarily have to do it in person in order to get excellent results. In fact, one of the most powerful strategies that I've shared with clients over the years involves the use of LinkedIn interacting remotely through messaging. With this strategy, you don't need to tell anyone that you're looking for employment. A percentage of them will offer of their own initiative to connect you with appropriate opportunities. To really make networking work in your favor, you need to treat it as something you do continually rather than as something you turn on when job hunting and turn off when you're not. A school tie is one of the strongest types of social associations that exist outside of family. By leveraging such associations, you can often achieve remarkable results, which otherwise might not have been possible. Yet most professionals fail to take full advantage of the alumni associations to which they have access. We don't have time now for the details of the alumni association strategies I give my clients, but the success that's been enjoyed with this approach is based on the principle that most jobs get filled by people someone knows. When you are referred by someone who knows the hiring manager, you become the person with the inside connection, the person known to others who gets the job, or at least the person who gets a chance at getting the job. Mistake number eight is avoiding rather than embracing mental effort. Let's face it, mental effort is the hardest work there is, harder than physical effort, which is why people naturally seek to avoid it. But in seeking to avoid what we regard as unpleasant, we make things even more unpleasant for ourselves. This is the basis for the proverb, the lazy person always has twice as much work. One of the ways this plays out in the realm of career development is the near universal tendency to use a point and click shotgun approach sending out resumes in response to job posts. Even if this mindless approach isn't working, 
most people would rather continue using it than follow a more effective strategy that's handed to them on a silver platter like the one that's depicted here. Mistake number nine is undervaluing oneself. The main cause of this in my observation and experience is fear. People are afraid to assert themselves regarding their true value because they are afraid that in doing so, they may offend whomever is in charge of hiring, promotion, or whatever. Rather than ask themselves, do I really want to work at a place that undervalues me? They opt for what they consider to be the safer course of action, remaining in a role with minimal job satisfaction and stifling their career development. The irony is that in the long run, this course of action is far riskier than doing justice to oneself by honestly asserting one's true value. As Eleanor Roosevelt famously said, no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. So why give it to them? Finally, mistake number 10 is being penny wise and pound foolish. Along the path of career development, you'll encounter numerous points at which you'll have the choice to invest in yourself for the sake of your future well-being and prosperity. If you save a couple of hundred dollars on resume help, for example, and end up over time losing tens of thousands as a result, are you really saving? Clearly not, as this is what's known as a false economy. False economy refers to a situation whereby an attempt to save money or cut costs leads to negative consequences in the long run. This applies not just to your resume, of course, but also to your mission statement, LinkedIn profile, interview training, and more. In all cases, the choice is yours, the same way that it's your choice as to whether you give your consent to someone who attempts to make you feel inferior. Simply paying attention to and avoiding these 10 critical mistakes will significantly enhance your career development, translating into substantial additional on-the-job satisfaction and income during the years ahead. If you'd like to further boost your development by working with someone who has a proven track record who will in the long run save you time and money. You may wish to avail yourself of a complimentary discovery consultation, during which time I learn enough about your situation to make an assessment as to whether my process may be a good fit for you. This of course would be reinforced by WiseAnt's good fit guarantee for an actual session whereby your satisfaction for the first hour is guaranteed or your money back, thereby making it a completely risk-free proposition for you. This is Daniel B., PhD, thanking you for your attention and wishing you the very best in all your endeavors.